So it's time to create uh, the JavaScript for our project. So, and we are going to add the dynamic things. Okay, I'm pretty excited. So the thing is that like uh, in order to connect the API, we need to understand what we are going to do. So for that, I have one diagram. So what we are going to do is like, uh, it's going to be explained with the help of this diagram. So basically we are here, we created a, our project with the help of HTML and CSS. Now what we need to do is like, we need to send whenever user like uh, search for the city. So all we need to send is the city name okay to an external service so why external service why can't we do it uh, internally it means that right now we don't have a server guys and also we don't have a database and if you wanted to maintain that you again you need to write a code for that like in, in, in php or java or .NET. okay so right now we are not going to do that and also we don't have the data related to uh, around the globe like uh, weather information okay so that not so easy to maintain so that's why like i wanted to use the external service for this okay so i'm using external website and maximum server for our app okay so in order to connect this external server what we wanted was like we have to uh, use an api so this api is provided by this particular external people guys so when you maintain your own one you are also going to uh, like uh, maintain an api for that so API is nothing but like, okay, it acts like a middleman between um, uh, client and server. So in this case, client, uh, we are the clients and the server is open weather data. So this is the server, okay, so that we are going to connect. So basically every server is going to maintain some rules. So those rules we need to follow in order to connect. So after we connect, okay, we are going to send the request and then the server is going to uh, take the request and based on the request it's going to fetch the data what we needed and it's going to give back okay the response that based on that response we are going to change the look of this project okay so this entire thing we are going to do with the help of javascript okay so uh, this is the theory so let's come to the practical so if you want to do go practical the first thing is you need to follow the rules right in order to connect so the first thing is that we have to go to this open weather okay api and basically what you need to do if you don't know this one like okay i'll need to do is that you can search for this text open weather map okay and after that you can click on this url and you can come back to the same page okay so uh, after that what you need to do is like you need to click on api and after that you need to click on subscribe to current weather data so if you want to click on this one and after that what you need to do is like you need to choose, choose the plan between so we have several plans here but right now we are not using for like for money this app so only for like demo purpose so that's why i'm going for free option but if you want to make money from using i mean by creating this app so feel free to do that after this okay so but before that all you need to do is like you need to create an account here guys so after you create an account uh you log in okay so uh, i can show you as well if you want so you can create an account like this and after that you can sign in so after you sign in all you need to do is like you need to go to api keys so this is where you create the generate the key guys so why we need to generate the key because if you go to the API and this is the service we want, right? So if you click on the API documentation, so if you wanted to connect to this particular server, okay, like I said, you need to follow the rules, right? So the rule is that like, whenever you wanted to access our data, you need to send your API key all the time. So this is the rule, right? This is the fundamental rule. If you, any time, like whenever you wanted to access some external APIs, so they're always going to provide this kind of keys for us okay as an account when you create an account after that you create a api keys so they are going to give this and every request you are going to send this one so then they will identify okay this is you we are calling okay from so based on that like if you have a quota so they are going to give the response back if you don't have a quota then they will say okay you have you exceeded the quota or maybe you need to pay a money to have more requests so that's how they can make money generally like you can also create uh, your own api and uh, make money if it is a legitimate uh, like service which everybody wants to use it okay that's how you can make money as well okay so by saying that like you now we already know what to call and what is the url and what data we want to call so the only thing is that this is not the url we are going to call because here it's saying that uh, the query parameter is latitude and longitude so but we are not going to call by latitude and longitude but we are going to call by the city name so that is q 
so which is this one this is the url we are going to call so basically what we need is like we wanted to send a city name along with the api key so we know now okay what is the url need to call not from here right so we know orally but now we need to do with the help of javascript so that's what we are going to do okay so now we can start creating we can start uh, programming the code okay so every time like okay this is how you need to know first okay and after that you can start programming easily because you know what you what you need to do and after that like what you need to expect okay so in this case you see like uh, what i did was first thing is uh, like in our project according to our project so we wanted to have a reference for the input so which are whatever you type here i wanted to capture that right so for that i have a reference okay so the location input and again whenever you click on this uh, search button i also wanted to have a reference for that so now again with the help of this uh, search button get element by id the element by id because so i gave as a id okay so you see like a uh, search button i gave as an id if, you, if i made it as a class so i need to do like document dot get element by class name so that's a different way like you can have a reference okay so in this case i have the reference so now again so i need to add an event listener because we don't know when the user is going to click so for that we need to add an event listener for that so add event listener for that so when we need a listener is like when you click so and after that we want to add our own callback so i am capturing now what i needed okay so when you click i know when you are clicking now so and after that what i need to do is like i need to uh, have the reference of the input to what you typed so for example if i type test here when you click here i wanted to have this value right so this is the value i'm capturing from the reference with the help of the reference of the input okay so and after that like what we need to do is like the this is where like uh, the interesting thing happened guys so this, until this far we already know like how we can have event listeners because if you followed my previous tutorials you already know okay now the main thing will start now so that is like uh, so how we can call the external api is using fetch so this is the fetch method guys so this is the method which allow us to call any external api or internal api okay to connect the service so all it accepts was like okay url and also some options so here you can provide url and after that like it could be like a get method or post method or delete or put method so basically it will allow like okay i mean right now we are just uh, like reading the data we are not updating or creating or deleting so that's why we don't need to provide any options okay afterwards so right now we I just need to provide the url so what is the url we wanted so we already know what is the url we wanted to call so this is the url we need to call okay so that url i'm going to copy and paste it here but along with the, something with the dynamic one because so i wanted to provide here dynamically the city name right so whenever the user type the city name so that i captured already so that's what i uh, gave here and after that you see here like what i did was like app id so i need to provide also dynamically in my app id which i created from from I mean, which i shown before so if you want to see again you can see uh, from your like here so you can see from here like api keys okay so this is the key which you wanted so any one of the key you can use okay no problem so now i need to create a constant for that so in my code so and that's what i'm going to do now so i'm going to keep this outside because this is a constant variable it's not going to change a lot so the reason i did is this is inside in the reference was this is going to change every time like uh, we want to capture this only when the user click so that's why i kept this inside okay so this is where and this is what i mean this is the reason i kept this outside because this is we don't have any reference we don't need to like this is not going to change a lot i mean not going to change at all okay so with this like uh, now we can able to call so fetch is always like a promise based guy so whether you can use async await or like you can go by then okay so right now i wanted to use then not async await so then is nothing but like okay it's going to give you the written promise so promise is nothing but in general words either okay so you give in general like in real world like okay, you give promise 
so are you keep it or you break it so in the in the same way in programming so whenever you i mean i uh, received a promise so whether you accept it or you reject it so in my case so when if i want to accept res means like in short code and i mean it as like response guys so response dot okay if it is okay then what i'm doing was i'm accepting the promise okay so i want to convert this into json because that's the format i wanted okay so and after that like if it, if it is not so if the response is not okay then i just want to console log that uh, so request failed to connect so that's the response because i don't want to tell the user okay uh, why it went wrong okay but i can see i can see it's the, because that, that's generally not going to happen okay so and after that like okay now i got the data again i need to use then in order to receive the real response okay from the server so this is where the real data okay where we are going to receive so with this now we completed the call okay so i'm super excited to show you this one because once you understand this how you can call okay any api using fetch method so you can create a number of websites okay so like very very good uh, projects you can create in the next phases guys so i'm going to show you them as well so just try to understand this one okay so now we are going to like uh, see how it works okay so to see this how it works like all you need to do is like you need to use developer tools in uh, google chrome so i open this particular like uh, app in uh, google chrome guys so, but uh, rest you can i can also open in uh, firefox or i mean um, microsoft edge so if you want to see the response in console basically what you need to do is like right click and then click on inspect it's same for all the browsers okay maybe the options are different but uh, it's going to be the same so just open your developer tools like related to your corresponding browser so in this case i am using a chrome okay and after that what you need to do is like you need to enter the city name what you wanted then click search so you see like if this is not working and the main thing reason is like uh, it's not working was the stupidest reason <laughs> is this that i haven't attached my javascript to my html so this is very stupid of me okay so and after that like once you add this now you can again see so why i mean I, how i found it was you can simply see in the sources guys so you can see here like okay whenever you attach uh, like any javascript or html file it's automatically going to be loaded so if it is not loaded which means that uh, there is something wrong that you didn't have like added okay so if you wanted to see for example let's say here i haven't added okay then if you refresh you see like if you click on js like there is no like uh, the script of yours like script.js is not loaded here so that's how you know like whether it is the whether the javascript is added are connected to your app or not so now i know so that uh, i made a mistake so i'm going to add my javascript okay here so now if i refresh again you see my script is loaded now for this html file so and also if you want to see the network whenever you click on search so you want you are connecting another service right so if you want to see that request you can see in the fetch or xml HR request so now you're going to send the city name okay so now you see like we created a new request so which is this one so what we are doing was we are calling this particular url whichever we are calling from our script so this is what we are calling okay and the payload so if you go to the payload we can see what are the query parameters we added so in this case i am adding like a q is equal to like milan as a city i mean a city name and then app id which i added here and after that the metrics so i'm used like how do you know like look at metrics mode okay all these properties so all you can know by with the help of the documentation guys so if you go to the documentation api again so then you click on api doc and again search for the secure okay so this here you see what are the options available for this particular url so these are the options available if you wanted to use them you can use them so in this case you can if you wanted to like have a response for like in xml format all you need to do is like you need to uh, use a 
more parameter so the now this is optional so only things required are for this url or only queue and app id so only these are the two things are required and also we are searching by city name but also we can search by state code or country code but i'm not going to do it i mean i'm not going to use like that i wanted to use only by city name okay so yeah i mean like this so you can explore all these options if you want okay so right now what we care is like okay whether it is working or not okay so it's i mean i'm going i'm using metrics because uh, for celsius i wanted to get the r response in and if you want it in for and heat then you need to change the parameter okay so read the documentation and accordingly like change the parameter okay and after the mode mode we don't need actually so we can keep because by default we want only json as a response okay so now i am doing this okay so i created the request you see like now i got the response so this is how you can see and debug the response of any network call okay so basically you click on this and another thing is that you need to see is like always like okay whenever you created a network call so if the status is 200 then it means that you correctly call the external api so if you see this particular like uh, status code is like 400 or 404 or 500 or like some other codes then you see like there you there is some problem with your action so 404 is nothing but like you are calling the wrong uh, you are calling the route which is not exist 500 is nothing but there is some problem happened in the server side you don't need to worry you just need to intimate them okay this server call is not working so please make sure it's working so that i can use it like that you can need to tell to other people okay so like that like every code uh, is going to be have its own meaning okay so for the for now like we don't need to care about that so all we need is like we already wrote a code here the console log so whenever there is a success so i want to console log my response so i already did it so you see here this is the response i received from the network so the same thing what you saw here okay so and okay i got some response but how do i know like this response is correct or not so how, this is also you can see from the documentation itself guys so you can see like the json format api response example so this is the api uh, like response example okay so you just need to compare this particular response with your okay whatever the response you received so after you compare that like okay you I mean the response are similar then which means that uh, okay you uh, correctly called and you got the correct response okay so that's how you know like okay how a network call is made okay and how a network call can be uh, called with the help of javascript okay so now we know what is the response i mean the response we received so all we need to do is like we need to access those parameters what we needed from the response right so what we need was we need a temperature what is feels like and what is the humidity what is the temperature min and max so these are the parameters we need to access so this is an object so if you wanted to access an object in javascript all you need to do is like data dot okay so data dot after that what is the like corresponding attribute is like main so main dot so i want just like just to show you temperature i want so i'm accessing the temperature now like this so if you open now again and we on and search for it so you see i i was able to access so even if you wanted to debug you can also debug using like this so you just click on there because for example let's say maybe you write a wrong uh, attribute name by mistake and if you type now so you see it like it's not undefined so how do we know like okay whether it is correct or not so if you wanted to check and debug it you just need to place a cursor like this so how do you open this one is like you just click on this script it will directly you directly navigate you to the place where your script is loaded for the browser wise okay so after that when you click again so you see we stopped the flow now it's not working how used to work before so all we need to do is like uh, so if you place the cursor here you know the response what you are receiving from okay now if you wanted to go to console again if you type data so you can also search that just like what you did main okay now what the mistake you did was like okay this is not this is just temp not temp sdr so all you need to do is like you can copy and paste here and you know exactly what i mean uh, what kind of uh, like attribute you know, wanted to call inside okay so now we know one attribute but what we need was we want all the data right so for that all we need to do is like write the remaining code for us so the remaining code is like uh what i wanted to do was is this one so i wanted to 
uh, attach my weather information which I received from the uh, response to this container. So that's why I have a reference for that. So this is the reference word weather info. So by using the ID, I can target this particular uh, like element okay and after that what i'm doing was i'm adding the inner html for that so in the html what i'm doing was i'm just adding a h1 for the terminal the city name okay the name of the city so if you want me to give an example so i will show you here so here what i'm doing was i'm just accessing the properties so of main okay so you can see here like the name is the city okay which i'm calling I am creating a H1 tag for that. And after that, what I'm doing was some separate uh, like P tags for temperature, temperature fields like and humidity or like temperature min and max. So I'm just accessing these properties and I'm creating more uh, more HTML elements to uh, like directly, I mean, inserting them inside as a children. Okay, so to do that, to see that, like I already did that, but uh, now it's not showing because I will show you why I did that intentionally because now you see so these are the like uh, data which I received from the response so which I created with the help of JavaScript but it's not showing because here the display property is none which means that I don't want to show that's why the, that's what it's saying that uh, so when you um, toggle it so you can see it back so if you don't i mean you can't do it like this right so all you need to do is you need to go with the programming so all you need to do is like this is the script you need to add basically so just one uh, line so this is the line you need to add so info.style.display.block but not only like uh, i mean i want to show this dynamic uh, block all the time because it either it could be error or it could be success so in both cases i wanted to show that block okay so now this is a success page okay and let's see whether it's working or not okay so when you click so now it's working perfectly what we wanted so the only thing which we are missing here is the background image is not changed based on the temperature right so that's the demo we saw before so to do that all we need to do is like we just need to add like a few conditions okay so those conditions are this so we are just depending on the same data what we received guys so nothing more so data dot mean dot temp so if it is below 10 so i want to use uh, that's uh, i mean we created uh, if you remember like i told you in the beginning so we wanted three images so we created the three images in our folder that's why we are just giving the url of the reference of that so slash images slash winter so like this we can access the images and we can set in the background okay so we are doing this for the body because if you see like i told you like i'm going to explain these two properties okay after i created the script so these are the two properties which we are helpful for the background image properties guys so background image url i'm adding and after that like this background image should be covered because whenever like you decrease or increase so i don't want to, the resolution problems will happen for the background image so for that that's why i wanted to have background image as a cover and i want always the background uh, image to be shown bottom like whenever like if there is no space for the image to show the entire image okay and yeah i mean uh, with this script now like if it is between 10 and 25 so the spring image is going to be loaded if it is more than 25 the temperature then similar image is going to be loaded and if it is less than 10 so it's going the winter image is going to be loaded so i hope it should be working like that so let's check in so milan okay cool so it feels like 24 so you know it's between uh, like 10 and 25 so this spring image is loaded so let's say maybe Hyderabad is always hot. So in India right now, yeah, you can see, so it's 31 degrees Celsius. So yeah, that's cool. Uh, and after that, like maybe in one hour. So like I shown before, one hour. Yeah, so it's working pretty cool, the code. The only thing is that there is a drawback in this uh, code is that like when you click, so you see you are not uh, resetting the input. So we need to do that, okay? So that we are going to do now. So the simple way is this one. So you just, I mean, you have the reference of the input, okay? And after that, the value need to be set to empty, okay? So let's try again. Yeah. So 
looks cool and it's working so there is another scenario which we are missing was like okay uh, the scenario is that like when you enter the wrong text or wrong uh, city name so what happens so see here nothing happened but in the demo like i shown like i am deleting the background image and also here i am going to show some some uh, message as a not found because i wanted to give do that as well so for that all we need to do is like catch so we need to catch errors whenever there is some bad response so why i'm saying it is a network problem because if you go if you try to see again the network and if you try to search for like a wrong um city basically what happens is like you can see in the network okay so you see 404 so which means that like okay it's a bad request we sent to the server okay so that like you see there is a message for saying that like city not found so this information is what we needed okay in order to catch that error so all we need is like catch so then then after that catch for if you wanted to catch any errors if you want and after that we what we need to do is we need to have a callback okay so and after that what we need to do is like we need to set this uh, input to like uh, empty again so location dot input dot value is equal to empty and again we also need to delete the background image right we don't need that so because it doesn't make sense to have background image if there is no data so in the same way we are going to do that and after that we also need to um, keep some uh, text that okay it's not working because the input is wrong so that like for that again we are going to add some inner html again so like we added for success so inner html is equal to so we are going to add one more key tag in this no data font so like that we are going to add as in html for that element okay so with this i think we should be are good to go i guess let's see yeah so yeah i mean this is how you can create the like uh, your own uh, weather app guys so i hope you like this video and i hope you learn something out of it so if you wanted to learn more videos like i mean more uh knowledge related to coding like this and so please don't forget to subscribe to my youtube channel okay so my youtube channel is dream to go online okay so yeah see you in the next videos where we are going to create our own backend and more projects right